Hi, I'm Dr. Brad Dibble from Pace Cardiology, and today I want to talk a little bit about the COVID-19 pandemic. We've heard a lot about how we can try and make improvements in getting the numbers flattening the curve, things like social distancing, staying at home if you're unwell, making sure you wash your hands properly, and of course, wearing a mask. And in lots of places around the world, that's made significant improvements, but there are still some pockets where the numbers are climbing and not getting flat as they should be. One of the things I wanna talk about is the mask. We know from basic scientific concepts that the mask makes a big difference. We know that because we know exactly how the virus is transmitted. It's spread through mucous membranes and aerosolized out into the air and passes along to either surfaces or to other people. That's why wearing a mask is important because it either prevents it from being coughed out or sneezed out. Both are major sources of getting the virus out there. Although these cloth masks don't generally protect you significantly from getting it, it helps prevent other people from getting it from you. And of course, if everybody's wearing masks, it makes a big difference. We know that scientifically makes sense, and we've also seen the evidence that by wearing masks, the communities that follow those rules are really dropping their numbers. So one thing I'm curious about is why so many people seem to be quite resistant to the mask. You don't have to look too hard on the internet to find people who are fighting the concept of having to wear one, including even in hospitals. And I saw one video of somebody who was actually trashing a whole sales display of masks in protest. But you know, history has taught us a few things about that. And I got an analogy of something that happened once in the past that helps explain why some people are resistant. When I started practicing in Barrie 25 years ago, it was well established practice that we should wash our hands before we see patients. That's actually significantly changed even since then. Now we use antiseptic solution when we walk into the hospital and when we walk into the ward and then when we walk into their rooms, we use that solution on our hands and then we reverse the process. So to see one patient in hospital requires me to do that six times. We also keep our arms bare above the elbows and we don't wear ties anymore that can dangle from patient to patient and cover their bed materials and then be spread to the next patient we see. And that's in large part because we've seen some outbreaks in hospitals over the years, things like C. difficile, where we know that these extra measures beyond just washing our hands help make a difference, and that's progress. But you know, I mentioned that washing our hands was established practice, but you'd be surprised that it took the middle of the 19th century before we clued into that. There's an interesting story that comes from Vienna, Austria. There was a doctor named Ignaz Semmelweis who was hired to be an obstetrics assistant in a hospital in Vienna. And one thing that was known back then was that a lot of women who were having babies died of something that was known as childbed fever, or a lot of times we would refer to it as pure pearl fever. They didn't know why, they didn't even know about infectious disease agents and germ theory at that point, but they knew that it was a significant issue for a lot of people. One of the things that Dr. Semmelweis identified was that there were two wards in his hospital. One of the wards had a mortality rate of 10%, and the other had a mortality rate of only 4%. This was well known in Vienna, and in fact, there were patients who begged to be put on the ward that had the lower mortality rate, to the point where they would even go and have their babies delivered in the street rather than go on to the higher mortality rate ward. And in fact, the ones born on the street even had better outcomes than the high mortality ward. So he wanted to try and figure that out, and he looked at all sorts of things that might be a difference between one group and the other. And the only difference that he was able to identify was that the ward with the high mortality rate was where they taught medical students. And those medical students would come from the morgue where they did autopsies. The other ward, they only taught the midwives who didn't deal with cadavers. Now, nobody thought that cadavers could possibly have anything that could be harmful and carried on to a patient. But Dr. Semmelweis noted that one of his friends was accidentally nicked by a scalpel and he got sick with something that was very much like the same infection these mothers had, and he himself died. So Dr. Semmelweis started to make the connection, and he thought there must be something that's being transmitted from the cadavers in the morgue to the patients. And he came up with the idea, we should wash our hands. And he wanted to use something called chlorinated lime solution, because he found that that was an effective solution to kind of get rid of all the nasty smell from the cadavers. And he figured if we're getting rid of the smell, we're probably getting rid of this bad thing that's going from the morgue to the patients. So he started to implement it in his hospital and they dropped their mortality rates to less than 1%. And in fact, this information spread across Europe and started a lot of hospitals washing their hands. 
But you know, here's the surprising thing. There was a lot of resistance to something as simple as washing hands. And there were many experts who fought against it. They wanted to hold on to the old beliefs that there could be possibly nothing that would come from a cadaver to a patient. And they didn't want to ever consider that maybe they were doing the wrong thing themselves. So they persisted with this belief that it was okay. It actually took almost a decade before some really strongly published data really proved without a doubt that to continue to do to go from the morgue to the ward without washing hands was a bad thing. And of course, here now we would never question it. Of course, it took more than 150 years for us to be at this step, but now we're facing something similar where something as simple and as proven as wearing a mask helps minimize the chance of spread in the community is being fought tooth and nail by some people. And those communities that aren't practicing that approach are having higher rates. So please do the right thing. Learn from Dr. Semmelweis's lesson that he taught us back in the 1850s, that something as simple as washing your hands and as wearing a mask can help minimize the spread and flatten this curve.